Good morning. Good morning. I am very glad to be back here to worship God with you again. Uh, it's always good to be in the midst of other fellow believers who love God and and uh, give Him praise that He so righteously deserves. Uh, this morning, I titled this message, Be a Maker. And I'll get into the meaning of that title a little bit further in just a little bit. If you like to turn to Romans 12, I'm going to read that here in just a second for those who like to follow along. Romans 12 <clears throat> is where the message is coming from this morning. Romans chapter 12. Now this passage it's focused a lot on service, and that service could be a lot of different things. It, it could be most anything. But today, I thought it could definitely apply to times of trouble. Um, maybe if you're dealing with what maybe people would call troublemakers. I'm not calling them that. But I. I I had an experience as a, as a kid um, where people called other people troublemakers, and I'll come back to that in just a second. But before I get there, uh, let's read the text. Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another, since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy according to the proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his ex exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. And it's a little long this morning, I'm sorry. <laughs> Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor, not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not be haughty in mind, but, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it is dependent upon you, be at peace with all men. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him, and if he is thirsty, give him a drink, for in so doing you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I thought about just reading the last part of it, but I felt it was very beneficial and necessary to read all of it, the, the beginning part of that chapter and the uh, ending part as well. Because it really, I think, fully rounds out this message this morning. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. I mentioned troublemaker a little while ago. So think of a time you were at odds with somebody. Think about that now. Um, in the past, maybe you're at odds with somebody uh, at the moment, or maybe even think of how you could be at odds with somebody in hopes to avoid it. But think of that time, whether you're a high schooler, elementary, uh, a co-worker, uh, somebody at the store, a neighbor, think of a time so we can apply this, that you were at odds with someone, someone or they were at odds with you, maybe I should say. Either way. And think about how you handled it. Think about um, if you handled it good, if you handled it bad. Just, just reflect upon that for just a second so we can make it real to us. And as you do that, I'll move on. I mentioned Troublemaker. As a kid, I was like a kindergarten student, first grade, and I can remember kids saying, Troublemaker, that kid's a troublemaker. And we thought that was a bad word, and it kind of is. But, uh, but they, they took it to be something like some other curse word or something. And, and I could think of a whole lot of things that people call each other that are really bad. But if you think about it, calling somebody a troublemaker is pretty bad. And when you say troublemaker, maker kind of implies action. You're putting action into something. You're putting action into causing strife and trouble and, and causing somebody to be disheartened. So, you know, that person who's doing that kind of uh, work or causing that kind of strife, they're being a maker of trouble. And sometimes we are on that receiving side of when a person is trying to be a troublemaker. I don't want to call them that. Maybe there's been times we've been the one causing that trouble, intentionally or unintentionally. Unfortunately, as a human like the rest of us, I've been guilty of it, and I still try to work that out and iron that out. And that's what my hope is today. I think that's what God's hope is today, that we get better at not being that kind of person and maybe helping and understanding when people are being that kind of person to us. But also growing up and even through high school, you know, I, I knew, you know, being born and raised in, in church and, and growing up knowing God, I knew God was righteous. And I used to think if I messed up, God's going to get me. He's sitting there because he's so fair and righteous. And, and, and something happened and there was a consequence. Well, God got me. And I had to really correct that line of thinking. And... What it really is, it's God's guidance and correction so he can get me, as in pull me into him. It helped. I had to learn his character. I had to learn that he's loving and supportive and he's all about my best uh, needs or whatever. And he wanted me closer to him. So, yeah, maybe, maybe there was a period of I got you, but not because I got you and, and, and uh and you almost feel so guilty where you feel like you're written off. Uh, but it's, it's like, I got to get you back to me. I got to get your attention. So sometimes when others fail us, we may be tempted to think, God, get them. And I've been guilty of that. And it's still tempting. And I'm afraid it's always a temptation to have that kind of mindset. And I don't think that's the way God wants us to think. We, we don't want to be saying, God, get them, you know. We know God is protecting of us and merciful and loving. And, and he wants to help us. And we know he is wrathful and, and can do that. But it's up to us to uh, focus on God's protection and mercy and love and just trust him. So sometimes we may be trying to wonder and try to make sense of it all when someone is pre, uh, presenting negative issues to us. But we don't have the right to take revenge. We don't have the right to even ask for revenge. We don't own that. God owns the vengeance. We don't have any rights to that. We need to get that out of our head. We need to be focusing on sharing God's protection and mercy and love to that person. And if he sees fit, that's up to him. We need to get that kind of mindset out of our minds. 
We are not to focus on revenge or vengeance or getting even or what the world says we should do. That's, that's, not our, that's not up to us. We have no say in that. And it clearly said that in our passage today. But when somebody does cause a hurt to us or a harm to us, it can hurt. You may want to get even. And sometimes these hurts can vary. Sometimes it's pretty sharp. Sometimes it may be a, a light cut, so to speak. It may be gut-wrenching. It may cost you a lot of stress and sleep. It may be a friend at school. It may be, it may be the neighbor. It may be even in your own home. And things could really hurt us. And the world, they're saying, get even. Do this. You know, get what's yours or whatever, whatever. But we got to be in God's will. We got to trust Him. And we got to be on board with His plan of salvation of all people. His way is better. God is sovereign. We need to trust and rely upon Him. It's not wrong to have emotions. It's not wrong to have frustration or be angry. But it is wrong on how we handle them sometimes. What we do with those emotions may be right or may be wrong. So maybe we need to focus on what not to do. We need to get our spirit, our mindset in, in, in this line of thinking where we are not trying to get even. Where we're uh, not harboring resentment, not holding on to it, not turn our backs on somebody, not writing them off. As it said in verse 3, that's why I read all of it, to not be haughty or arrogant, to not be self-righteous. And what I mean is realizing that we've needed forgiveness too. We are all one body. It's like that saying goes, when you point your finger at someone, you've got more fingers pointing back at you. So we focused on what not to do. Let's focus on what to do. It clearly said in our scriptures today that we need to pray. We need to pray for others, whether they are presenting themselves as your enemy or not. Pray for the situation. We need to forgive. And I don't mean wait until you feel like forgiving. You need to, we need to, I don't say, I say we. We need to choose to forgive. It starts with a thought, a choice. Just like I said in verse 2, your thought life. Work on your thought life and choose to forgive. The emotions will come. Choose to forgive. Make that choice. Choose to be a forgiving person. Choose to be that example. Choose to do good. It's a choice. We're going to help. We need to choose to help, whether they are your enemy or not. This kind of like it referenced in verse 20. And... And this could be God working on them through you. God may be working on them. You may be His instrument. We need to guard our tongue. The tongue could be one of the sharpest tools in the shed. It could cause so much hurt and strife. It could cause a lot of dissension. It could cause wounds that may not heal for years. Words could tear somebody down quicker than just about anything. Let's choose to use our speech, our words, the correct way. We just need to trust Him, like verse 16 referenced, and to be a blessing and speak a blessing and not a curse. And even in verse 1, worship God. Just bring worship to God into your life with your whole self. And just watch the transformation He gives you to help those who need a transformation. Have a joyful spirit and be diligent in doing all these things that we've mentioned as it referenced in verse 11. Have a mindset to help all, even the seemingly lowly. We're all equal in God's. He loves us all. Verse 16 said, help all, even the lowly. And use your gifts. Don't hide them. You may be that person God is using to help somebody develop. 
And yes, we may have to take a little bit of craziness. But he's given us gifts. He may be using your gift to help that person. And I saved these for last. These two for last. Paul wrote in Romans to persevere. So why do you think he wrote to persevere? When you're dealing with strife, when you're dealing with craziness, I'll call it craziness or hardship, it's easy to give up and say you're done with that person and to walk away. Sometimes these things don't find a resolution overnight. Sometimes these things may take years to resolve. Maybe not. Let's hope not. God can make it right now if He, uh, he chooses to. But God told Paul to tell us to persevere. Don't give up in the trial. Don't give up when working on that person or, or, or to receive that person when their heart is opened up. Persevere. Trials are hard. Tribulations are hard. And we all have had those seasons in our life. Persevere. And sometimes until you get to that finish line with whatever unfortunate hardship it may be, Control what you can control. Be at peace when you're in the best that you can. And let God do what you can't. Verse 18. We've got to understand that we are all a work in progress. I hope God's not done with me. I, I can see where I've got a lot of holes I need to fix. We all do. But that person who may be causing you strife a fellow Christian maybe even they are a work in progress we all have different strengths and weaknesses but we all have to be moldable we've heard God is that great sculptor that's true but also be of help to the sculptor God to others when he calls you to be in prayer learn his direction so you know to hear his voice and to act upon it. Put action into it. Be a maker. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 9. What I took from that is just love. Just love. Get all the other craziness out there. All the worldly answers and, and all the other junk. I'll say that. Call it junk. All the other craziness or junk. Just love. Because God just loves us. And we've presented craziness and the junk to God, unfortunately, because we've all fallen short of the glory of God. But God did nothing but just love us and does nothing but just loves us. He wants us to be a part of that and to show Him to others. When we deal with others, we've got to realize we're dealing with powers and principalities. And yes, the people sometimes, and we have to, have fallen prey to those temptations and, and haven't shored up our weaknesses. And maybe we've said things wrong or done hurtful things or, or somebody's doing something hurtful. We've got to realize we're dealing with powers of principalities. But the way to overcome evil is with good. If not, that cycle's going to continue. Let's be a part of the solution, not part of the problem. Let's stop the vicious cycle. Let's not go by the world standards. Let's stop the cycle and be a part of the solution. And the way to overcome evil is with good. God's word is true and infallible. And it clearly says, do not be overcome by evil. If you let it, it will overtake you. But overcome evil with good. Have you ever wondered why this person keeps seemingly getting off easy? And nothing ever happens to them. And we sometimes maybe think, God, are you going to correct them? Are you going to get them or, or something? God has their best interest in mind too. It may be a test for you. Maybe God's also trying to work on your skills as well. Maybe He wants you to be better at showing mercy and love for Him. 
Maybe He wants you to use your gifts for Him. Maybe He wants you to, meet, to be more open to this person or that person. But ultimately, He's giving that person a chance to repent and avoid judgment and avoid the smackdown as I was kind of referring to it earlier. Just like He's given it to us. Just like you and I have had. If you look at Jonah in our Old Testament, Jonah was called by God to go to Nineveh and tell them, hey, you're, you're going to be destroyed. You're not living right. Of course, I'm paraphrasing. But Jonah, Jonah did want to do it. And we know the story. God got his attention. He was thrown out in the water and, and the fish got him. And he repented and said, I'll go. And he did. And guess what? Those people repented. At that time, they repented. And God spared them judgment. And they were in hopes of that. And Jonah was upset about it. God needed to work on Jonah's receiving of it. He had to teach him a lesson with the tree and the growing in the desert and, and said, you know, you had to care for that tree. I should care for these people. And so the Ninevites, the, the ones who were causing the strife, was getting a lesson. The person God was using was also getting a lesson. Jonah needed molded, just like we do sometimes. The Ninevites needed molded, just like we need to be willing to help do with others sometimes. We need to learn from the situations that God gives us. It's no accident you're in the situation you're in. We need to know God's character. Jonah knew God's character. He says, I knew you'd forgive them and let it go. Jonah wanted to be able to say, God, get them. He knew God's character, and we need to focus on it. He is forgiving and merciful and loving, and we need to show God's love. And we need to uh, be helping develop Christians and help them be more mature or bring them into Christ. You need to be willing to make a difference. We need to be actionable. We need to be a maker. We need to be a maker. Wouldn't you want those same helps and gifts too? Would you, you know, would you want somebody's gifts to be used to help you? I would. Weren't we, weren't you, weren't I was thankful for them in the past? I'd be thankful for them now. So let's, let's have that open mindset where we're helping others and, and giving people room to grow. Let's learn from Jonah. Let's learn from the Ninevites. Let's hope and pray for our enemies so that they can be molded and we can be molded in the process too. Let's rejoice in their repentance. And if they were spared what you thought they should get, let's, let's be thankful that they did come to repentance and didn't have to have a correction. There is much rejoicing in heaven over a sinner who repents. Let's be a part of the, uh, the growth, the spiritual maturity process that we all need to have. Let's be willing to deal with the quote-unquote troublemakers or, or the troublesome situations in life without attitude or without labeling them or the situation as troublemaking. Let's be a maker of peace. That means let's put action into it. Get to work. It's not easy. It is work. We've got to pray. We've got to worship. Just like it's said in our scripture text this morning. We've got, to, we've got to forgive. We've got to do good. We've got to pray for our enemies. Put action into it. Be a maker of peace. Be a peacemaker. Be a peacemaker. It starts with a choice. Not emotions. It starts with obedience. Not emotions. It starts with following God's word and God's will and God's way. Not the world standards. It starts with your thoughts and your prayers, as is said in Romans 12. I'm going to read just a little short scripture passage to sum this up. And it's in Romans 11, 28-33. From the standpoint of the gospel... 
They are enemies for your sake. But from the standpoint of God's choice, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For just as you once were disobedient to God, but now have been shown mercy because of their disobedience, so these also now have been disobedient, that because of the mercy shown to you, they also may now be shown mercy. For God has shut up all in disobedience so that he may show mercy to all. It is God's will for everybody to come to him. Oh, the... Okay, I'm sorry, that's where I want to stop. So, the thing to remember is, they may be a blessing to you. The people who are not making it easy in your life, they may just be a blessing to you and for you. And you may be a blessing to them. And let us all always remember that as we go forth and show God's love. Love is messy sometimes. It's not always easy. The direction isn't always easy. But we just read a blueprint that may help us be peacemakers and show God's love. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray and ask that with each and every one here in their lives and within their families and within the community and the state and the world that we can show your love and, and show that you are wanting to have everybody come to you and grow towards you. We pray that we could be peacemakers all the time. We pray that we and others could be molded to be the best examples of who you have us to be, to be that light shown to a dark world. We pray that you lead God and direct us. We pray that you have your hand upon us in all situations, that you go before us, with us, and after us in all these situations. And we pray that we can have that peace that transcendeth all understanding. And to you be all the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' holy name, amen.